Okay. Uh, welcome to System Analysis and Design, ACSD 2613. Um, this video is uh, discussing on uh, process specification and structured decisions. This, this particular topic yeah, um, has been divided into four deep parts, four videos. Okay, the first video is basically in this video, yeah, is uh, to, to discuss on uh, what process specification is, yeah, to understand the goals, yeah. Uh, and the second video will discuss on uh, the first method of uh, process specification, which is structured English. The third video would be um, discussing on the second method of process specification, which is vision tables. And the fourth uh, video would be discussing on uh, decision trees. Uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of uh, following all the uh, video series, you should be able yeah, to understand what process specification is. You'll be able to produce a process specification using the various uh, methods mentioned here and uh, be able to choose an appropriate decision analysis method for analyzing structured decision and creating process specification. of decision yeah we will we are we need to to somehow document them in a certain way so um, here there are several methods yeah there are several methods that you can use in in documenting your logic of decision um, however we will touch only on three uh, of them which are popularly used which is uh, structured English decision tables and decision trees. Okay. Uh, along the line, when you talk about logic of decision, yeah, uh, you, sh you will then be able to distinguish yeah, between logic and structured decision compared to semi-structured decision. Uh, in a semi-structured semi decision, uh, decision may involve uh, human judgment. Yeah. In a purely structured decision, yeah, uh, the the decision uh, at the end would re, uh, is resulted from the logic, yeah, fully based on the logic that you specified. Structured decision analysis methods would help to promote completeness, accuracy, and communication. Yeah, that's, that's, that is why we need to be able to present our logic of decision clearly, right? So, as I said uh, earlier, this particular part, uh, this particular video, you will uh, focus only on the process, general about process specification, while the next three videos will focus on structured English decision table and decision tree, yeah, which are among the methods that exist in representing process specification. So, what is a process specification? It is sometimes referred as mini specs because it's, it is, a, it is a, a specification, yeah? a small, a part of a, a big uh, total complete specification. It is a specification that describes of one particular process. Okay, so um, when do you provide process specification? Yeah, we have processes in data flow diagram. So are we required to provide process specification to all processes in our DFT? The answer is no. Yeah, you produce process uh, 
you produce process specifications only to a to a process that is considered as a primitive process okay so what is a primitive process so a primitive process is a process that is said to be functionally primitive yeah? where uh, from that process you find out that you cannot explode it further into a child diagram so however the process itself is not that it's not clear we don't know what is the the the, the logic yeah, to complete or to do the process yeah so if process then you produce a process specification to it whereby in the process specification it will describe the logic for the process okay uh, besides primitive process uh, you may also uh, come up with a process specification for some higher level processes yeah once again if those processes uh, is not, cannot be uh, described well using data flow diagram so you come up with a process specification to it if you are also familiar in object oriented design yeah uh, you also need to produce process specification for methods that belong to a class okay uh, so what is the goal for for producing a process specification one is we it can help to reduce process ambiguity okay so if we are not sure about something we can look at the process spe specification produced and and it will yeah by looking at it and of course you have to make sure the process specification is produced correctly yeah so it does it then only will it be able to produce ambiguity next is to obtain a precise description of what is accomplished and third is to validate the system design okay so uh, so even uh, when we have a primitive process but then as i said just now not all primitive process need to be produced a specific process pipe from for it okay so uh, how do we decide that so you can look at uh, whether the process feel, fulfill this okay? so if a process uh, represent physical input and output no you don't need to provide process specification for that primitive process if the process represents simple data validation then you don't need a process specification for it because by looking at the if since the process is simple we when we know it's about validating then we can easily understand how to do it yeah, so we do need to produce process specification for that primitive process. A process or a primitive process that use pre-written code. Yeah? So if you have a process that uh, uh, use pre-written code somewhere, uh, some pre-written code is uh, somewhere. Uh, so you, it's just a matter of call the pre-written code and do it so you don't need a process specification to it okay uh, on this diagram yeah it shows yeah, it's the relation between process uh, process specification and some uh, structured english okay so on your data flow diagram you you have a symbol of process process symbol Okay, and assuming that that is a primitive process, yeah, whereby what do we say just now on primitive process? We say a primitive process is a process that uh, still require uh, the logic uh, of the process to be explained somewhere. So if you have this uh, type of process, yeah, a primitive process, then produce a process specification to it how do you write it you can write it in a, what we call as a process specification form 
So the logic of the process would be written either in structured English, in decision table, or using decision tree. Which which one do you want to use? It all depends on the uh, logic of the process itself. Okay, you will see that yeah in the next video yeah if let's say your process involve only uh, simple simple sequence uh, involve uh, simple decision making yeah like simple if else statement then use pro structured English to it. If the com the 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 uh, condition yeah. The, the logic of it uh, involve um, multiple conditions, yeah. then probably you'll be using uh, decision tables. Yeah. Uh, and if, for example, uh, you also have uh, conditions, but it may require a certain sequence of conditions yeah? uh, to be followed, then probably your process specification is best represented using decision tree. Okay, so the following uh, videos will discuss each of the uh, type uh, of method used in pro uh, preparing a process specification. Right, uh, so what do we have on a process specification? Uh, so if you are preparing a process specification form, try to make sure that all the 10 items uh, mentioned yeah, in this slide and the next slide uh, included yeah, in the uh, form. Yeah. The first one is process number. Remember, we say process specification always uh, relate to a particular process. So, how do you know, uh, how do you identify a process? You identify a process through the number that you give to the process. Yes, yeah. so remember in your DFT, yeah, every process must be numbered. Okay, so use this number. Yeah, so uh, in the process specification form, the process number must match the process ID uh, on the data flow diagram. So if there's anything that the analysts need to understand about that particular process, they may need to review yeah, by looking uh, at the data flow diagram and they can they will be able to, to, to choose the correct data flow diagram that contain the uh, process number. Uh, the next thing is uh, include include the process name. So once again, the process name must be the same as the process name on your DFT. Uh, process description you know, is the third item. So this is whereby you provide a brief description. Not the detail logic uh, of the process yet, not yet, but only a brief description. It's just an example is this like this. Yeah? Determine if an item is available for sale, if it's not available, Create a back of the item record, or and then determine the quantity available. So, so this is a very brief description, yeah, like an overview, lah, yeah, about the process. And then uh, the next item is to also list down the input data flow. So use the names found, yeah, the data flow name found on your data flow diagram, okay. Um, and also the data names should also be the one used in the formula or logic that match the data. The flow is the same. Use the name found on the data flow diagram uh, and the data dictionary. Um, so uh, you also need to also include the type of, of process. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> We, uh, we know about yeah, uh, when we talk about a data flow diagram, a physical data flow diagram, we need to identify whether uh, the process, uh, the processes we have, whether they are batch, online, or manual. So by by identifying yeah, whether they are batch or online or manual. For example, if this is online, so the next thing that they, uh, the the analysts need to do. And the designers need to do is to re, to produce uh, uh, the required screen design. If it's a manual uh, process, then we know that we need to also uh, have a well-defined procedure because the manual process, yeah, the logic of the manual process need to be 
uh, followed by the employees who are performing the process task. Uh, uh, the next thing is on a uh, name of subprogram or function. You only include this if the process yeah, uses a subprogram or function. Okay. Otherwise, if if there is no subprogram or function used, so this uh, slot can be left uh, empty. Okay. Um, the number eight is the process logic description. Okay, this is the most important part yeah, in the process specification because at, in under this section, this is where you describe the process logic. Yeah, when you say the process logic, usually it will involve certain policy, yeah, a certain business rule. So write it in the uh, everyday language use. Yeah, for so normally we use English. So you write your process logic description using English language. Remember not to use computer language pseudocode. Yeah, because computer language pseudocode is only understood by you since you are the computer people. But your customer, your client will be able to understand it. Um, uh, logic method uh, reference. Yeah, this is required if you have you find you feel you see that there is not enough room for a complete structured English description to be written yeah, on the form. So you can include a reference to the complete structured description or the complete vision table or the complete tree. Okay, so meaning that the complete version yeah, of either one of the uh, specification is uh, it comes yeah, as a supplement uh, document most likely okay uh, and finally is to list any unresolved issues okay so this may occur when you are trying when, when you are trying to write number eight okay so what when you try to write that in and you may find out that something is kind of missing or not clear yeah so state this issue as an unresolved issue because you would need these issues yeah, uh, as of to, to form uh, to do a follow-up. Yeah? So it would be, uh, you would use this issue in the follow-up meeting yeah, with the users. So you can ask. Okay? Right, so um, in it, yeah, it says about business rules. So what does it mean by business rule? Business rule are procedures or a set of conditions or formulas that allow a corporation to run its business. So there are certain business rules. For example, we talk about business rules of registration. So one of the business rules says that students cannot register more than 18 credit hours per semester if they want to attempt to, 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 to um, register more than 18 credit they have to do something okay so this is the business an example of a business rule yeah so um, okay so for a process specification yeah probably probably yeah the process specification will need to comply to a certain rule okay so whatever it is yeah uh, so it may involve certain business terms certain business conditions and actions certain data integrity constraints certain mathematical and functional derivations logical inferences processing sequences and eh, relationship among among facts about the business okay so you might you may need to embed certain business rules in the while you are writing the process logic for that uh, process right so this is an example of a process specification so you can find see that these are what we meant by the various items that you can have on the process specification this is just an example yeah, you may come across with different uh, process specification forms yeah but uh, roughly i will say uh, these informations are included yeah, in a process specification form yeah, so you can look at this uh, for further understanding. All right. Um, I think that would be it yeah, uh, for this part of our video. Thank you very much.